Today's video is dedicated to all things sourdough. I know I'm a little late on the sourdough train, if you will, for 2020, but it's something I never felt the desire to do until recently. My husband, because of different food allergies and such things like that, we have kind of changed some things in our home. I wanna share with you my very first attempt with anything sourdough related. So I thought it would be fun to share here on my channel. I know I'm interrupting all kinds of Christmas content and all of that sort of thing, um, but just in, in lieu of Vlogmas, this is something that I've been filming for the last couple weeks and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to share it with you all. So if you're wanting to try something new, if you're wanting to give sourdough a shot, here in today's video, I wanna share with you what worked. I wanna share with you what didn't. I wanna share with you some of the different bumps that we had along the way um, that I had to learn through trial and error. So if you're interested in sourdough bread, sourdough pancakes, sourdough cinnamon rolls, I've heard their sourdough pizza crust, all things sourdough. Maybe in sharing my experience with sourdough starter, it will give you a little bit of a, a push, maybe some encouragement to try something new in your home as well. I want to give you a disclaimer before I get too far into this. I am not an expert. If you haven't gathered that already, I am not an expert in sourdough. I just wanted to put that out there, that I'm not an expert. So if y'all are gonna come at me hard, I, I don't have it all figured out. I'm still learning. But if you wanna learn and grow and figure out how to grow your own sourdough start for homemade sourdough bread and many other sourdough recipes, maybe this video is for you. So this is what my sourdough starter currently looks like. This is how things are going. This has been probably a month and a half in and she is happy, she's doing well. Baby right here, she has a name. Her name is Henrietta. Don't ask where that name came from, I have no idea. Thing is just like a pet. You have to tend to it regularly. If you plan on baking with your sourdough starter every single day, you're going to want to leave it out on the kitchen counter or in a nice, cozy, warm place and feed it every day. If you do not want to use your sourdough starter every day, it is perfectly okay to stick it in the fridge and feed it once a week. That's totally fine. So this actually, I'm, I'm going to attempt to make sourdough bread tomorrow for the very first time. I might film it for you guys. I don't know. I'm assuming it's probably gonna be a flop because I've never ever been able to make homemade bread and have it actually turn out. So I've never tried sourdough bread though. So I'm going to attempt to use this starter tomorrow. So if it's awfully thick and full, that is why. I just fed this starter. So it's doing its thing happily next to the wood stove. I'm gonna share with you the process I used to make my own sourdough start, which has now blossomed into this beauty. So the process to make your own sourdough start is about a seven day process. So don't think that you're going to start this whole process and use it immediately. This is something that happens over the course of a few days. So I'm gonna share with you days one through seven, what my starter looked like. I just wanna walk you through that process. When I started this sourdough journey, my very first attempt failed. The problem was, and this is a big bonus tip, and I hope that one of you can find this helpful if you've attempted sourdough in the past and it did not work. My problem, we heat our house with wood heat. We have a wood burning stove. My house was too cold. So what I had to do, and, and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. I couldn't figure out why things weren't going like they were supposed to be going. The problem was my house was too cold. So what I did was move my starter from my kitchen to the counter by the wood stove. So I would either set it on our dining room table or I would set it on our homeschool bookshelf that we have next to the wood stove. That's what I did to finally get my start going. So my first attempt failed. My second attempt with sourdough start has blossomed and it's been amazing. My husband begs for sourdough pancakes all the stinking time. He loves them, my kids love them. It's been such a fun thing for me. I want to learn to love being in my kitchen. I don't necessarily love cooking. I I just don't, guys, it's not my thing. So I'm hoping through this sourdough journey um, that maybe it's going to create or spark something in me um, to give me that love for being in my kitchen and cooking and creating homemade things, healthy homemade things for my family. The ability to have sourdough bread right at your fingertips to me is just a good feeling. So what I want to share with you is the process. So this was a seven day process, day one, of my second starter, again, my first attempt failed, my second attempt at sourdough was a hit. So this is the process that I followed for both sourdough starts. The first one didn't work because of temperature. So once I discovered it needed to be in a warmer place, 
everything was great. Everything was going well. There were no problems, no hiccups whatsoever. Anyway, I'm gonna walk you through the process. Let's get to it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so day one of my sourdough starter. This is the flour that I used. It's just from Walmart. You use one cup of flour and one cup of warm water. And this is where I went wrong the first time, guys. I just added cold water to it. And I don't know if it would have necessarily mattered all that much, but since my house was already cold, it definitely needed warmer water. So like think baby bottle warm, lukewarm, so to speak. Mix it up real nice and neat. Get everything stirred in really well. Make sure you don't have any big clumps in there. And then you're just going to cover and you can kind of see here the consistency of my sourdough starter on day one. So the next step I have, some people use rubber bands. I just used a dry erase marker. I went ahead and marked my sourdough start where it was at to watch it rise, to watch the fermenting process and kind of see what it started to do through the course of day one. Now here we are, day two. It is the morning of day two. I went ahead and uncovered my sourdough start. I brought it back into the kitchen. We can see there's some activity going on. It didn't rise a ton on day one. The consistency, you can tell it's kind of thickening up a little bit. We're just gonna repeat the same process. One cup of flour, one cup of lukewarm water. Sometimes it took a little bit less, honestly. So it wasn't always necessarily a full cup of water. Um, it will vary depending on the type of flour you're using, all that good stuff. So just play around with it. But now after you've added the lukewarm water and your flour, you're gonna mix everything in nice and neat, get everything stirred up, and then you're gonna sit and wait again. Like I mentioned earlier, place your sourdough starter in a warm part of your home. If it's too cold, it's not going to do a whole lot of business for you. Then we're going to mark where our sourdough starter is at, and then we are going to sit and wait. Now days three through seven are where you really start to see some action. Your sourdough starter should be actually getting bubbly. There should be a lot of activity going on now, which makes it all the more exciting to keep going um, through the process and see, see the outcome. So what I'm going to do now is take it into the kitchen. We're gonna stir everything up. You can see this time had kind of a hard crust on the top of that. I've heard it's totally normal. We're gonna stir it in. We're gonna add one cup of flour. We're gonna add one cup of warm water and sit and wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow is when the system and the process for the sourdough start kind of changes just a little bit. You can see the consistency here after I've mixed it up is very, very different from what it has been um, throughout this process. Day four, this is where things change up a little bit. So what you're going to do before adding flour and water to this, you're actually going to take one cup of your starter and you're gonna to toss it out. Sounds crazy, sounds like you're wasting a perfectly good start, but that's what you're going to do on days four through seven. Remove one cup of your sourdough starter and just trash it and move on to the next step, which is adding one cup of lukewarm water and one cup of flour, just like we've been doing all along. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward through this process. You guys are probably kind of getting the, the point by now, but I just wanna walk you through um, what my sourdough start looks like for the next few days. Day five for me was a fun one. There was a lot of action going on here. You can see that my sourdough starter had a lot of bubbling going on. It was rising very well, probably the most that I've seen so far. Um, it had quite a lift to it. And then as I stirred it in, it kind of deflated, got all the bubbles out. We threw away one cup, added a cup of warm water, a cup of flour, and then the consistency changes all over again. And we wait for tomorrow. All right, guys, and we made it all the way to day seven. So our sourdough start is happy. It's ready to be used. It's ready to stick in the fridge if you don't plan on using it in the near future and just feed it once a week. Whatever your plans are now, we have an active sourdough starter that we can make sourdough pancakes, sourdough bread, sourdough cinnamon rolls, whatever suits your fancy. I'm so excited for this, guys. It's been a fun little journey. As you can see here, our sourdough start has changed so much since the very beginning. And on this morning, I actually went ahead and for the very first time 
ever made sourdough pancakes for my family. They were a huge hit and have now currently become a staple. Every Sunday, I make sourdough pancakes for my family. Thank you so much for being here for today's video. Like I said, I know it's something different than I typically share here on my channel, but this is part of my life. And that's what I'm sharing here as Simply Living It is part of my life. Things that we're doing, things we're interested in, things we're currently loving. And this sourdough start has been something that's been fun for me. So my hope in sharing this is that maybe there's something you can take from what I am sharing and apply it to your life, apply it to your home. That's my hope here. I encourage you in this space. That's, that's my heart. So again, if you like what you see, click that red subscribe button for future videos here at Simply Living It. I will see you in our next video.